just to give you an example, for those of you who are not maybe operating in the sector, this just gives you an overview of what the sector, sort of broken down, what it looks like, right? So film, broadcast, music, um, content, IP, you know, anything to do with intellectual property, things that you produce from your mind, ideation, which will also come to the marketing communication industries, advertising, um, newspapers, publishing, all of these industries are actually affected by the lack of distribution in Nigeria. Distribution and piracy affects not just music and film, they affect, I mean, with the counterfeit production, they affect probably 500 to 600 subsectors of this economy. So until you deal with a wider issue there, you can't really be asking. Bimbo was talking about financing a film, for example. It's hard to finance a film when physical product has been demonetized in your domestic market. Yeah? So the key thing about Nigeria, I mean, this, 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 this slide is just to give you an example of the level of investment that has gone into the sector from the Bank of Industry. I took this from a Bank of Industry event I attended last year. For audiovisuals, most of you producers want to go to Interrail where they have a bit of subsidy. So, one of the reasons why you find that in North America, productions are moving to Canada is that the US government is not giving the level of support they gave 20 years ago. So the Toronto International Film Festival is not growing because people like that are growing. Because the Canadian government is actually giving the US guys a lot for their lives. Several guys in the world. So for me, the first issue is state support. How do we support the industry? And we, 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 I also don't believe we must do it with tokenism. Uh, A major problem has been that we've been giving them handouts. So people just wake up and say, give Hollywood 10 naira, give these guys 5 naira. I don't think that is the right approach. We must have a system that will say, if you are doing 50 movies per round, 10 members of crew, you are entitled to X, Y, Z. What can be done to get better laws on the books? Uh, I, I would imagine from what you're saying being outdated is that the, probably the laws haven't kept pace with um, the, the, the new digital economy, the fact that everything is online, the fact that you can download, you can share music, you can share movies and all of that. So uh, how do you actually, is it, is it lobbying the government? How, how does it work? Okay, I would say that in the practical sense of the international economy, the government by itself is not now, for instance, uh, what's his name? Sorry, our president, Wari, recently, I'm sorry, President Muhammad Wari, he recently innovated the council, our council. Now, he innovated members of the council that do not even understand what advertisers do. The idea is that when you innovate a council member, he should be at least a distinguished fellow of the profession. And this was not the case. Now, the question is this if our president would I would not say big time people. If they would flout that, laws that would take into consideration the changes that the industry is going through. And at the time when the laws were created, they were, there was no intention for instance for government to be involved in the industry. So if the government who makes the laws is not involved in the industry, then surely they cannot make adequate laws for the industry. So what we have is we have some laws. There are some laws that we still need to have. So for instance, if you look at music, we still need legislation as regards publishing of music. We still don't have those laws. But if I look at the Copyright Act in Canada, for instance, it addresses the issue of um, how much per, you know, how much per song uh, should be charged as publishing. These are critical issues that are making it difficult for, for business owners to do business. So the correct answer is there are some laws, there are not enough laws, and the laws that do exist are inadequate and outdated. I want to bring Don in here. So Don, 
on this panel represents the industry. Surely, and, and again, there was a there were several comments from speakers about there being a lack of structures. Is the entertainment industry itself structured? I mean, are there associations, are there groups um, within the industry that are there and equipped to lobby government? I mean, as, as someone from the industry, uh, if you look at how many lawyers are here that could be employed uh, lobbying on behalf of music or film, uh, or other parts of the entertainment industry. Does that exist? And, and, and how, how is it working if it, it does? I mean, so, coming from a producer's perspective, and also being an executive in an organization, we face very challenges. And taking my current job as an example right now, so in people communication, we are launching what I can best describe as as Netflix, kind of Netflix in Nigeria. A lot of money is going into setting this up. Um, we have Cisco on board doing new technology. We are funding free data so everybody can come and watch this content for free once we, once we are ready. And then that comes to the question of we now need to produce this content. And we need to produce huge volume of content. At least every year, every year we were looking at about a hundred hours of, we're looking at a hundred hours of content at minimum. And it's a lot of content. So the question then becomes, um, how do we get that capacity to do this? So um, I, need, I need 50 producers producing this content over the next two years. Then in the third year, I need to be able to reduce this to like 25. In the fifth year, I need to have like 15 producers that are going to be making 100% of the content for us. But where do you find these producers? You cannot find them because the producers are individuals. Everywhere else in the world, the producer is a company. But in Nigeria, the producer is an, is an individual. And the problem is not even just the, the producer themselves, it's also the environment. Because not only is in a crisis, whether we like to admit it or not, but because we're in a crisis, does not necessarily mean it's a bad thing. Because being in a crisis could, could, could enable us to put in those structures. But the solutions are not really coming in. And, it, and it's a cycle. As a producer, if the TV channel cannot guarantee me that I am going to have um, five, 10 commissions in a year, I'm not going to go raise 20 million naira to go buy equipment and buy all these things, hoping that I will get a job. So if there is no structure in terms of the so-called institution of the system in Nigeria to be able to come and say, okay, this production company, I am, I am going to commission you for 2019 and I'm having conversations with you in 2018 to say 2019 you're going to make five, five content for me, five different projects for me. They're going to be one hour content, be it a series, be it a film. Then the producer can start to now plan as a company, employ more people, get training, get equipment. Without that, I can only continue to live and to mouth. I can only continue to live on what I have today. And, and if I can't move from being an individual, I cannot grow. I think the advice is more to the industry stakeholders. And maybe what the government needs to do is listen to the right people. But the industry stakeholders need to go to the government with what their needs are and how they feel that their problems can be solved. And the government needs to listen and implement. I think, I think that's really how this needs to go. The, the, the government should not fund individual filmmakers because when you fund an individual, um, the risks are too high. You should always fund a company. We should encourage filmmakers to set up companies, lim um, limited production companies that you can then invest money in. Because, you, because as they grow, you have you have the data, you have the you have the resource, you have the um, they have the experience that people can invest in. Nobody can invest in a vacuum. But when you continue to fund filmmakers, and those filmmakers make individual films, and those indiv individual films are not put are not protected within the entity of a business the industry never really really grows and it's always important that if you're if the government is going to fund fund
fund structures, fund distribution, fund cinemas, fund all the things that would allow a filmmaker to maximize their return. Wedding party, wedding party at 600, uh, 500 million era was only about 350,000 people in a population of almost 200 million. So that tells you where our need is. Our need is more cinemas. Our need is more TV channels. Our need is more VOD platforms, more Eurocos, so that when people make films, they have they have the distribution network to show those films to the audience. So the filmmakers are making money, the platform people are making money, and then you can start to see the growth because then filmmakers can then start to set up as businesses that people can then invest in. I would look at some um, sponsorship, sponsorship, and then. Um content licensing as well because sometimes we have um, our own homegrown content so when we produce some of this content we license out to third parties that are willing to use our content on their platforms and through that means we also generate revenue and then I will also look at um, partnership media partnerships and battle agreements for instance um, we have say a brand like Lou comes to us to say oh we want you guys to come and be um, partners on this event you know and then we do like a value for value sort of agreements where money is not exchanged but we offer value we offer service for value received and the likes and vice versa if, if you look at there's something like 35 to 40 cinemas in nigeria a country of 180 million people um we we did the research the other day and what it showed is that in other countries uh, for instance in the u.s there's something like three or four thousand people per screen uh, per cinema screen um, in somewhere like Brazil, it's over just about a hundred thousand people per screen. The UK is about six, seven thousand. In Nigeria, it's 1.2 million people per screen. So that's why we need more cinemas. There's just not enough screens to show uh, what we wanted. You know, when we release our films and we look at how much money could be made, there's always a ceiling on it. There's always a limit to how much you can make. So Wedding Party is a good example of a movie. The, if you remember, the cinemas were sold out for weeks and it made 450 million. What would have happened if more people were able to buy tickets in those existing cinemas? What if more people were allowed in different states where there's no cinema at all? If they, they were hearing about the film, but they couldn't buy a ticket.